All right, forgive me for what just happened. I got cut. Um, Mr. McE wants to continue Paris days and subdue woke this morning to reflect on his new circumstances. What are those changed circumstances? Security will tighten and Paris must become a little less charming. The necessary tension between security and freedom will remain a challenge. The death calls, bullets, and bombs will come again. Here or somewhere else, we can be sure. The citizens of London, New York, Berlin are paying close and nervous attention. Attacks on Paris mean all of Europe must reflect on its new circumstances. If such an event can occur in France's capital, Berlin, Rome, Brussels, or Athens could be next. And given the setup of the European Union, a coordinated multinational terror plot is now in the realm of possibility. The EU is loath to give up borderless travel, multiculturalism, and the rights of individual nations. Yet terror continues to push the power block in that direction. Make no mistake, more attacks are coming. An operative from ISIS claims the organization has already smuggled thousands of covert terrorists into Western nations. Can Europe protect itself against such threats even more? What will it be forced to do to protect its freedoms? You know, I don't want to continue to read, but you know what? November 13 attacks came while other terror attacks were still fresh in Parisians' minds. On January 7, 2015, two masked men armed with assault rifles stormed the offices of satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo before making a successful escape, leaving 12 dead and 11 severely wounded while the suspects were still at large. Over other related attacks in Paris killed five more. In August, three Americans, including two members of the armed forces, overpowered a man that began to open fire on passengers in an Amsterdam, Paris train. The attacker injured two before being subdued. All across Europe, the threat of Islamic extremism continues to ratchet up. Germany averted a bomb attack in April that was modeled after the 2013 United States Boston Marathon bombing. Also, in September, in September a 41-year-old radical Islamist was shot dead by police after he stabbed a policewoman in Berlin. In February, an extremist in Denmark shot and killed two victims and injured five police. Belgian police thwarted two attacks in 2015, and the country has quickly become, become notorious as a hotspot for jihadists. The Guardian reported more than 250 Belgians have left the country to fight alongside jihadis in Syria and Iraq. About 75 have died in combat, and 125 have returned. According to the International Center for the Study of Radicalization and Political Violence, Belgium has the highest rate of foreign fighters per capita of all Europe. Hold on. I'm going to finish reading and I will explain some things to you. Worryingly, Belgium's capital, Brussels, is the headquarters of the EU and home to many NATO agencies. In addition, due to Belgium's central location in Europe, open borders and a low level of security, the nation is prime ground for extremists to live in obscurity, collaborate with sympathizers, hatch plans, and base operations. Terrorists across Europe are taxing the continent's intelligence officers. A former counterterrorism investigator in France told CBS, on the whole, during the last few years, we realized that we are not coping anymore. He said that intelligence agencies in his nation are overloaded and that dozens of attacks this year were only thwarted by pure luck. The situation is similar throughout the EU. The main reason for the continued uptick in Islamic extremism in Europe is that there are no easy solutions. Any effort to truly solve the problem will require not a change of one policy or leader, but an entire overhaul of its system. The European Union itself has an incredibly complex structure. There are 28 member states with 28 heads of state. There are four different presidents, the European Parliament President, the European Commission President, and the European Council President, who is not to be confused with the rotating presidency of the European Council, which is shared between member states for six-month terms. Any sweeping change to the power block must be agreed upon by differing nations with very unique cultures and ideas. As a result, every attempt to stem the growing tide of terrorism is a mess of complications. If the EU decided to close all national borders, for example, it would effectively reverse the free travel Schengen Agreement. Migration expert Matthew Chitardis explained to AFP why this is a problem. Calling Schengen into question is its risk because each state deals with the issue in a very national way based on public opinion. And in the end, what is called into question is the crossing of national borders. Open borders cannot go away without other problems. The agreement has been a boon to Europe's single market by reducing costs of goods and has increased a sense of unity among Europeans. Reinstituting borders and customs will reverse these effects. Let me read that again. Open borders cannot go away without other problems. 
The agreement has been a boon to Europe's single market by reducing cost of goods and has increased the sense of unity among Europeans. What is a boon? Benefit or an advantage that to, that to leave the borders open is a is benefit to their nations, the nations of Europe. It could also force thousands of nationals to relocate. For instance, a Spanish native living in Belgium would potentially have to change his citizenship, get a visa, or move back to his country of origin. This does not even get into the logistical nightmare of figuring out what citizens are currently what citizens are currently where. Another issue is how to handle those fleeing to the EU from wars and environmental disasters. If the power bloc stops accepting the downtrodden from war-torn areas of the Middle East, it will be seen as harsh. Yet among the many legitimate evacuees, there could be terrorists and refugee clothing, as was the case with one perpetrator in the latest bombing in Paris. While Europe celebrates being a melting pot of cultures, this love of multiculturalism is being tested by a continuing increase in the number of Muslims there. In Germany and France, they make up 5.8% and 7.5% of the population, respectively. If governments crack down on inherent, on inherent some Muslim, many innocent Muslims may be affected or be inadvertently radicalized. Other Muslims have chosen radical Islam because of impoverished conditions in EU nations, such as France. Islam is a permanent part of France. Now it is not going away. Soren Kern, an analyst at the Gatestone Institute and author of Islamization of France, told the Washington Times, I think the future looks very bleak. The problem is a lot of these younger generation Muslims are not integrating into French society, although they are French citizens. They don't really have a future in French society. They feel very alienated from France. This is why radical Islam is so attractive, because it gives them a sense of meaning in their life. No matter the decision, European leaders are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Let me explain to you what is going on. The powers that be that are running this earth want Europe to be open to multiculturalism so that the price of goods can be what? Lowered. And they can have the advantage in the same slave trade they did to blacks. And now they're just doing it all around, full circle to every race of people. So now they're between what? A rock and a hard place. They have to accept the Muslims into their countries. And when they accept them and they don't know whether they're radical or they're not radical. Now the counterintelligence agencies are now taxed to the max because the powers that be do not want national sovereignty. They want an interconnected world in which they can control and influence you in the propaganda of Satan. And that through that propaganda, you can now stand up and say, we want more wars. The powers that be have left Europe in a desolate place. Just like, that's, like, that's like they left America. Because they want to flood these countries with Muslim immigrants so that they can utilize them to bomb cities. To bomb nations that they deem to be against their agenda. The powers that be want these borders open so they can continue their slave labor of humanity using you as goyim, nothingness, futile, flesh and blood, unclean semen, a disgust to us fallen angels. That's what Satan is saying. The time for your kingdom, Edom, is at an end. You can no longer control the world like you want to. And as you try to find solutions, is the more you will find problems. Because you are of your father the devil. A liar and a murderer from the beginning that stood not in the truth, stood not in the love of Christ, stood not in the hope and in the faith of Christ that through him we can have power, righteous power, not power to control and destroy humanity for your filthy, selfish, and demonic agenda. Wake the hell up! Upholding EU ideals in the midst of this turmoil has proven to be an impossible juggling act. The power block could not do either very well. The true threat may be against the EU as we know it. This is a predicament that is dividing the continent. That's a high up for you. He's dividing the Edomites because he wants to bring his people out of this mess 
that we created in the first place. Now he wants us to come back to him. Come back to him. He says, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Just come to me and you will find your rest in me. Even before Paris, Shenzhen was crumbling under the pressure of what some have called the Great Migration from the Middle East and Africa into the EU. Many after the Paris attacks will no doubt conclude that not only do the foreigners arriving on this continent threaten their culture and livelihood, some of them pose a physical threat too. To state the obvious, European feelings about immigration were already red hot. The Great Migration has set neighboring states against each other. The East-West split in the EU over accepting migrants is arguably the biggest threat to the Union's future and shaking up settled political systems. Even Angela Merkel, who has for so long looked like a near permanent future of German politics, now looks mortal. Mrs. Merkel's decade-long and powerful position as German Chancellor is under severe threat as a backlash to her continued approval of more Syrian refugees into her nation. The Telegraph article summarized where this appears to be heading, so no one should be surprised if passport checks and checkpoints start reappearing and borders that previously existed only on paper start again to take physical form. But what of the European ideal, open borders, and individual nations functioning as one at the core of what EU founders had in mind so many decades ago? These values cannot simply go away, and the union remain intact. Pressure is growing on countries to act. Joseph Janin, head of the Berlin, Germany, Office of the European Council on Foreign Relations, told the Wall Street Journal, but the ability to do so in a European framework is not. In the past, those calling for closed borders as a way to maintain national sovereignty and control may have been a faint whisper against the overwhelming voice of those pointing to the benefits of unity. But in the wake of recent attacks, there has been a shift. Notice the challenge leaders now face. Politically, leaders must convince the public that openness works despite the cross-border movements of the Paris attackers. Practically, they must find ways to improve joint European security mechanisms that have proved to be of limited efficacy. In other words, those seeking to have borders remain open or simply asking for the enforcement of laws that clearly do not work. Read it again. In other words, those seeking to have borders remain open or simply asking for the enforcement of laws that clearly do not work. Read it again. In other words, those seeking to have borders remain open or simply asking for the enforcement of laws that clearly do not work. Yet there are advocates for measures beyond closed borders. Others are calling for Europe to turn away refugees and anti-Islamic sentiments are brewing across the continent. The difference in responses between France's January Charlie Hebdo attack and the November Paris attacks brings this to life. All after the response in January under attack at the satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo and elsewhere left 17 dead, there were no grand public appeals for solidarity with Muslims after the Friday attacks and left 129 dead in Paris. There were no marches, few pleas not to confuse practitioners of Islam with those who preach jihad, the New York Times reported. Instead, it was a palpable fear, even anger, as President Francois Hollande asked Parliament to extend a state of emergency and call for changing the Constitution to deal with terrorism. It was largely unspoken, but nevertheless clear. Secular France always had a compl complicated relationship with its Muslim community, but now it was tipping toward outright distrust, even hostility. EU leadership, including European Council President Donald Tusk, also appears ready to act. Speaking in Strasbourg, President Tusk said the crisis threatened to transform the EU and the short principles as border-free travel between Shenzhen's own countries. This challenge has the potential to cause tectonic changes in the European political landscape, he said. So what happened is the powers that be want the borders to be open, to continue their slave labor of humanity, and to continue in one voice, the one voice of Satan the devil that through our unity we can accomplish building back the Tower of Babel and bring back that unity in which I can go to heaven and kill Ahaya Ashar Ahaya. Don't believe that deception. You will never kill Ahaya Ashar Ahaya. You will die in your sins. And you too, you Europeans that continue in this kind of system will die with the terrorists because the terrorists will not exist any longer either as the kingdom of Ahaya is about to be established. And another thing, the powers that be want limited freedoms and more security so that they can control you more easily. That's why they're changing the constitutions across the board so they can control you. Take your guns, take your Bibles, and take your families. What is the keys to, 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 to society? They want to take it away because they know that's your power. When you have faith in Yeshua the Christ, in his works, in his faith, in the keeping of the commandments, they know that they cannot defeat you once you sit therein and learn from that. 
let's finish. Mr. Tuss said, these were extraordinary times that require extraordinary measures, extraordinary sacrifices, and extraordinary solidarity. Who is the, who is the only person that's extraordinary is the Messiah. You're not extraordinary, Edom. These extraordinary times dictate that more of the same will not get the job done. Europe is being forced to truly approach the problem in a special or remarkable way. Otherwise, they can expect the same, if not worse, results. So that's it there for today. I'm going to end with this last video. This is 12.36 p.m. Central Standard Time, 3-5-2016. The solution for Europe, come back to the Most High Ahaya and worship Him. Support the children of Israel and help them to leave the influences of Satan, the devil, his propaganda, his murder, his sexual perversion. Help in changing the hearts, the minds, and the souls of humanity. That's how you'll stop terrorism. That's how you'll form a new constitution that institutes the policies of the Bible first and everything else last. That puts the kingdom of Ahia and his righteousness first and everything last. You can have the Europe you want if you come back to the Most High. But remember, your time is over with as prophesied in the scriptures. And the Messiah, Yeshua the Christ, is coming back for his nation and for those in particular that worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you. Be blessed. Amen.